It's 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, July 17th, 2024, and we just got two and a half inches of rain so far today. Um, that's plenty of rain. That's exactly what we needed. Um, and I'm not noticing that there's any puddling in the field. It looks like the, the field was able to soak it all up. It started raining around 12.30 or 1. Uh, we had some pretty good downpours, uh, lightning and thunder, things like that. At one point, I thought we were going to get some flooding. Um, because the street in front of our house was filled with water and the drainage dishes were filled with water my lawn was filled with water but it looks like everything absorbed into the ground and ran off pretty good uh, here in the pasture I didn't see any problems it just looks like we got a lot of water you know which is good so tomorrow is going to be uh, well right now it's about 75 degrees 80 percent humidity so it's not cold by any stretch of the imagination but uh, it is humid, so if I start working, I'm going to sweat a lot. Um, hey, there's Rami. Hey, Rami. Were you scared of the lightning and thunder? Did that scare you at all? Looks like you took a shower or something. <laughs> so the, 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 the fur um, is like waxy. So it's like waterproof. So like underneath is dry. But there's like this waxy coat. That's the lanolin. They just have a little bit of lanolin compared to the wool sheep. Um, there is the younger ram. He was born last year, I think. Last, like, uh, March or something. So he's like a year and a half old almost. And the older ram, where is he at? I'll go try to find him and walk around. Yeah, it's about 75 degrees, which is nice. It's a reprieve from the heat. Uh, tomorrow's going to be in the 70s. And then it's going to be in the 80s. And then we're going right back to the 90s. Um, but it looks like we're going to have some more rain... Uh, tonight so we'll see how much we get tonight and then next week we'll get some rain as well so just kind of a weird summer but these summer storms are very very welcome um, and one of the reasons why I'm careful not to overgraze is uh, specifically because the vegetation in the ground helps to conduct the rain underground the uh, roots um, of the plant um, encourage what's called the mycorrhizal fungi, fungi um, or funguses if you prefer. And what that is, is kind of a network, a mesh of, of fungus that kind of glues the soil together but also makes room and allows uh, nutrients and things to travel through the soil, especially water and air and things like that. It's kind of the definition of living soil. If you have the mycorrhizal fungi um, if you have a strong network of it, then your soil is alive, and if you don't, your soil is dead. And the fungus supports uh, bacteria colonies and tiny insects and all kinds of things. And uh, it says bacteria and everything else that work together to actually um, liberate the necessary nutrients from the soil around the plant. And also from the air, because the nitrogen is, there's plenty of nitrogen in the air, you know. 78% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. So we certainly don't need to put it in the, in the soil. Um, the plants know better than we do how to get nitrogen in their systems. And nitrogen is, the nitrogen cycle is part of that important uh, process that provides life. Um, proteins are high in nitrogen. So that's why, um, anyway, it explains a lot of things. There's the carbon cycle. Carbon's kind of the backbone, the, the energy transport. It's the fuel, um, just like uh, gasoline is carbon, and a bunch of hydrogen. Sugars are carbons and hydrogen and some oxygens. And those sugars are produced through the miracle of photosynthesis uh, when plants uh, breathe in carbon dioxide and they take in water and sunlight. And those three things combine um, through what is basically magic. Um, and produce sugars and oxygen, right? So the carbon dioxide, the carbon stays behind and the oxygen is liberated. And then we have the nitrogen cycle, and um, there's a hydrogen cycle, obviously. Hydrogen is one of these critical elements, and hydrogen, hydrate. Hydrogen is basically water stuff. Um, oxygen is the burning stuff. There's an oxygen cycle in plants as well, and there's other nutrients as well that all play together. Anyway, the point I was making is that um, leaving plenty of grass behind um, is my current strategy. 
I'm not doing anything like uh, total grazing or anything like that. The idea is that by leaving the soil alive and leaving the roots as deep as possible and just taking the tips of the grass um, and leaving the rest, um, that's supposed to encourage the soil to become alive and do all the, the natural processes it's supposed to be doing. So this rain is a welcome addition. Um, runoff as well. So typically if you're if you don't have plants in the soil, when it rains a lot, it just washes away that top layer of soil, or rather dirt. Um, and along with that goes a lot of the nutrients that you were hoping to get into your plants in the next uh, season, you know. So by leaving something in the soil, you don't get runoff. Um, what else? Oh, the rain doesn't land on the ground. It hits the plant where the energy that it had falling to the earth um, so if you, if you studied physics at all, you learned about collisions, simple collisions. And, uh, so in a collision, energy is converted from one form to another. We don't need to know what happens in the collision. We just need to know what happens before and after. Those raindrops are coming down rather fast. And if they hit the soil directly, uh, that energy has to go somewhere. And the only place for that energy to go is to throw the soil up in the air, right? Well, one of the places the energy goes. And so when you get a rain, it creates a cloud of dust if it's hitting the soil directly. But if the plants absorb that energy, um, they can conduct that water down to the soil. Look at that. Look at that. They can conduct that uh, water down to the soil without damaging the soil, the top layer of the soil. Um, the plants also provide shade and uh, notably the, the air closer to the soil is uh, cooler and the shade helps to preserve the water in the soil for longer. And um, I specifically recall last year during the drought, I took some parts of the ground that were heavily vegetated and I dug my fingers down in there to the bottom. This is Lady, by the way. She's friendly. And when you get down there, even though we're in the middle of a drought, the ground was still damp because the plants are helping to keep that moisture downstairs. This is the older ram, um, bought him back in 2021, I believe. He was uh, not even a year old when I bought him. And he had a twin that he was born with. I wanted to check his hooves, but he doesn't like me. He was like, every time you catch me, you take me weird places. Yes, I do. But uh, his uh, brother died um, last February. Not this February, but last February during the ice storm. Um, I'm not sure what killed him. Could have been anything, uh, but he died. So... Anyway, yes, so this rain is welcome. It's part of uh, my drought management strategy, which is to preserve as much water in the soil as possible so that when there is a drought, I won't know it. It won't be readily apparent to me. Uh, that said, I do measure rainfall. And so I have a, a rain gauge and I just, I don't really record too much with it. I just note that it said two and a half inches or six millimeters. I believe that's correct. Um, or was it eight millimeters? Let's see, 2.5 times 2.5. Uh, what would that be? That's a five to the fourth power. Yeah, it's about six millimeters. So, anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. You can see there on the horizon where the trees are, you can see the cows moving in the back 20. Um, the bull got out again. I, I'm kind of not concerned because his days are numbered here. So we're going to take him to the sale barn as soon as I get a chance. And that will be that. If I can take him and the, and the uh, heifer calves at the same time, that would be ideal. But it's probably not possible to do that. So anyway, guys, have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.